Hey everyone, Ronnie Road here for another week with Ronnie Road Designs. Um, what are we going to do this week? Well, last week I finished up, I think, pretty much telling you how I got started with the distribution of my charts and where we went from there and gave you an insight of something we were going to try to do this week. Uh, we're still working on uh, portions of the new design, uh, Morning Light. This is the one. Uh, next week, I'm going to be showing you Affinity Photo. I'll be at a stage where I think I can show you the design process and how I go uh, from a concept to uh, colorization, getting the X's and O's and putting them all together. So I'll be at some point, a point I can stitch uh, that design. I've already got to one point in the upper left-hand corner. And if you recall last week, we cut our piece of fabric 280 by 180. And I showed you how to find the middle and mark it with the blue marking pen. Well, I've done all of that this past week. And in that upper right-hand corner, I was able to start stitching on this. So uh, putting some stitches together that I thought would work really well for this design. <laughs> And where I am on that right now in a hoop is what you're looking at right now. This is morning light. That's where I am. This is uh, this is the upper right hand corner. And of course, I've got the three inches on the side, three inches at the top. And so we're moving along with this. I've, I'm to the point I'm working this way on the sky. Um, as I've told you before, a lot of my work on the sky is... Uh, it's just hit and miss. I put a lot of colors together to make it look good. So it's, it's fairly uh, easy after you take the design and after you take the image and put it into Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo and do everything you can to it. But anyway, I'm going to show you how I do that next week. Uh, this week, um, what I have done is I have finished Snowbound. That was all completed and I showed you that uh, last week all rolled up in a ball. I hadn't washed it, ironed it, done anything with it. Um, I have washed it this week. Uh, I've ironed it all out. I've got all of that all done. I, I didn't make a video of me sitting there actually taking a piece of material, putting it in water and washing it, using soap and every, what you do and wringing it out, putting it on an iron board and ironing it flat. I mean, it's pretty simple. Everyone can do that. So, But what I am going to show you this week on a few videos after I finish talking here is I'm going to show you how I mount that piece of material to my foam board. I use a foam board to mat this on. Some people use a uh, mat board or other types of board. I always use a foam board. That seems to work really well for me the way I mat it. Um, also got the frames and all the hardware. This is the frames you're going to be seeing this way. This is my silver frame uh, that I've got. I've purchased this week and I'm going to put all this together for you today and i'll show you how i do that and also cut the mat board and measure the mat measure for my mat board once i get the piece of material mounted to the foam board um what you're going to see today i don't know if anybody else out there mounts their uh finished material the way i do um i don't stitch it i don't lay stuff i tried that about uh 30 years ago, I tried sitting in there, taking a piece of material, wrapping it around the back and lacing it all up. Didn't work. Didn't work for me. I couldn't do it. I mean, I tried. I really, I really did. I worked at it for, my gosh, I bet I spent, God, I bet I spent at least five minutes on that trying to get it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I just wasn't interested in lacing. So I had to come up with an alternative means. And I think I have. And it's worked for me. It's never come loose. It works. And I tape everything. And a lot of people out there are going to tell you you shouldn't do that. And that's fine. Um, this is what I do. This is not what everyone should do. If you still want to take your finished material and take it to a frame shop or someone to stretch it and lace it and do all that you can, uh, I don't know. Uh, where it's available to you it is available in my area i have a place that will do that but it is not just a little expensive it's extremely expensive it's very time consuming and so i just don't put it in in i just don't put that into it uh, i do build some of my frames these are the metal frames that i'm going to be using today 
other frames that I use in my work. And here's just a here's just an example of an old picture I did. This frame you're looking at right here, I cut this, uh, I put it on the table saw. I buy the wood from even Lowe's, Home, Home Depot somewhere, a craft store. And I buy this and I rip this on the table saw and put it on the router and I do all the routing and on the back. I do the rabbit on the back that fits into. And so um, I build my own frames and take and go down and get some uh, stain, Memwax stain, and stain it color I want and put some shellac or some uh, polyurethane on it and make it gloss and so they turn out pretty good but I do custom make my own frames to ones that I don't want to put into a metal frame so today what you're going to be seeing is my process of mounting my finished piece of work via snowbound to a piece of foam board once I get it mounted I'll show you how I measure for my frame the cuts and everything so Everything should be uh, fall in line, hopefully. Um, I've never done this before. Um, I'm going to have an, uh, some help with my video holding the camera, so you have to bear with me. And uh, once all this is done, if you have any questions, just uh, give me a call or write me or put a note down. I'll be happy to answer them. But I want to emphasize, this is the way I mount stuff to a board. This is not the preferred weight. This is not for everyone. This is what Ronnie Rowe does in Ronnie Rowe Designs. This isn't, frame shops will not do it probably this way. So, um, but this works for me and I'll show you the kind of tape I use and um, all the instruments and everything I have to go along with. So anyway, we're gonna get started on that. And, um, the next uh, videos, a couple of short videos you'll see, you'll see that process uh, take form. And so anyway, stay tuned and uh, I'll get with you after we finished all this and tell you and show you the finished product. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm back downstairs and what I'm gonna show you now on this design that I have, which is Snowbound, what I'm going to show you are the materials that I use to frame this up. Cut my mat board. These are the two pieces of mat board cut already to fit the frame. I've got a, a dark blue and the light blue is actually a piece of mat board that's white. And once I cut it, there's a blue inside of it. You'll see that. I've used this before. Um, the other things I have to mount it, obviously, are my frames, four sections of the frame. I have a long piece of steel here. It's a square, if you will, that I use to run my um, mat cutter along. Other things that I use is a mat cutter. I use a handheld mat cutter. I have a magic rub tape. That's to get rid of some pencil marks that I have when I mark the mat board for the cutting. Um, also, the frame comes with uh, a little package. This is all the materials needed and everything to put the frame together once I'm at that stage. Uh, the other thing, good pair of scissors, a sharp pencil, and the way I mount it, this is tape. This is right here. This is 3M tape that you can get from Lowe's, Home Depot, and this tape is used for putting together furnaces, installation, and that insulation and that sort of thing, uh, duct work. And um, it's a peel-off tape. It's very sticky. It does not expand. And um, once you, I'll show you how I'm going to use that, this piece of tape to put this on the mat board, on the foam board, you'll see what I mean. But anyway, I'm going to get started here shortly. But first of all, I want to show you all the materials that I have to put this picture together. Okay, everyone. Um, what I've got here right now is I've got the piece of material, snowbound, laid on my piece of foam board. This is the foam board that I'm using to mount this on. And what I have done with this is I've taken this design and from this point, the, on the left-hand side, from this point to the edge of my foam board right here, I'm looking at three inches. And that is the three inches we talked about to put around the frame. And also on this side, from this point right here, I come and that's three inches. So I know right now 
the piece of fabric on the foam board, it's in the center from here to here. Now, as far as the top and bottom goes, I will shift that up and down because with matte board, you want a little bit larger area on the bottom than you do at the top. And so what I do from there is, now you're not going to see this in a frame shot, since I know that this piece of material is right on that board and I want to tape it to the board the way I do it, I've got some room from here to up here on the foam board. I can see along this edge right here that's, that's pretty, um, I've got some area to tape this to the board. On the sides, I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors and come along this, this piece of material right here. And I'm going to cut this piece of material. I know that everybody's having a fit seeing me do this. But anyway, this is the way it has to be. So I'm getting rid of this piece of material. This is what you would normally use if you're going to sew or wrap around something. And this side over here, I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to cut about the same length off there, which is, I kind of guesstimate it because I know mat board is going to cover up in here. So the edge I'm cutting really doesn't make that much difference. It's just getting this on back on the board and getting rid of these two, spinning this around and putting it back on the board. And as you can see, uh, actually, I didn't cut enough off either one of those sides that I really want. So what I'm going to do is cut a little tiny bit more off of the fabric. Now this works for me. When we get through, you'll, you'll see how this turns out. But for right now, just bear with me. I'm going to cut another little bit off of this side here. And as you can tell, I'm not rolling anything. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just taking a little bit off so that this design fits on this piece of board that goes in the frame. And that looks like, that looks pretty good to me. Now again, what I'm gonna do before I start taping it, I'm coming to this point here and going to the edge of the board. And right there, I hit it pretty well. That's three inches, that's roughly three inches. And from this point here, which is the furthest point, one of my stitches, if I come over here, uh, that's a little over three inches. So move it back this way just a little tiny bit and that's uh, about a three and an eighth and if I come over here uh, that's about a three and an eighth that's so uh, that's pretty much centered on the board I want more at the bottom so I'm moving it up here to the top just a tad like so now that is okay now that I've got my piece of material snowbound, I've got it cut and I've got everything even around. I'm getting ready to tape it to the board. As you can see what I have done, I have taken this tape and I've unspooled a roll of it, peeled the back off of it, and I've got individual little pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start at this corner, the lower right hand corner, and I'm not going to pull anything. I'm just going to put a piece of tape there and press it down on that corner. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm coming over to the left-hand corner. I'm going to press it down. I'm going to pull just a little bit horizontally, not vertically, horizontally, and press this one down to hold it. Then I'm going to take my whole design, spin it around, come up to this corner, the opposite from the other one. I'm going to pull it a little bit tight. Now that we have all the tape across the bottom that I just taped, I turn the pattern over, to turn the whole thing over, and I start from the top. At this point, I start and I put the tape down and I pull toward me. This is going to eliminate any bubbles or any flex in the tape this way. So I pull it hard, push down, and tape. And I go through this process of push down, and tape and I go I continue this on all the way across the top of the design and you get the point of what I'm doing I'm working this way by pulling pulling I put this down without pulling I'm putting this down and the little bit of pull I did took all of the 
uh, wrinkles and everything if there were any wrinkles left in your material and that eliminate those. The next process I'll do, I will start on either end. It doesn't make any difference. And I'll go through and put a series of tape down this side by just putting them down. And then the opposite side, when I put them down, I will pull. And that takes care of all the wrinkles. And this has worked for me for a long, long time. I've been taping like this. Um, my wife was telling me that uh, it might come do the tape might release somewhere 20 25 years but uh i really probably not going to worry about that a whole lot 25 years from now so but anyway it works it holds up very very well no one ever sees this unless they take the piece of apart to remat it or clean glass and uh, from the back everything looks the same it's a very easy way to put um your material on i have a pattern Mounted to a foam board, we're going to start cutting the mat. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm measuring all the way around where I want the mat board to come. From this point to this point is three inches. And I've decided that the mat board to come two and a half inches. That's my inner mat board. So what I have done is measured, taken a piece of mat board, the inner mat board, and have measured two and a, uh, two and a half inches here on the right, left, top, and three inches on the bottom. And when I did all that and marked it and used my mat cutter to cut this piece of mat board, as you can see, the middle section came out, put that to the side, and this fits over the whole design with the blue edge showing. Now what I want to do is cut my outer mat board. If this mat board here was two and a half, my outside mat board I'm going to take a quarter off each one of those dimensions, and this will be two and a quarter on the right, left, top, and since the bottom was three, that's going to be two and three quarters. I'm going to cut it. So now I'm going to show you how I cut that piece of blue mat board. Here's my piece of blue mat board. I've already, it's hard to see, I know, but I've all, already got lines drawn on this piece of mat board for me to follow in my cutting process. So. Now I'm going to get my long piece of straight edge right here, and I'm going to stand up. I'm going to get my mat cutter, which I already have. The blade, if you will, the blade is already out on my mat cutter. So I'm going to take that blade, and I'm going to put it right in the corner of my lines that I drew. And I'm going to come take this mat board, and um, I'm going to try to find the line on it. I think I got it. Right there. And so then I'm going to take, hold it real tight. Take this. Go all the way down. To here. And that's one cut on that side of the mat board. And I'll do this all the way around. This is hard to do and film also. I've got two more cuts to make. Right here. That one. And one more cut will be right here. So consequently, then I pop this piece of board out of there, and you'll see the 45 degree, you can probably see the white edge on this. And now, when I take my design and put this on top, and do that, now what I have is a finished piece. I have my outside blue mat board, the white mat board with this blue streak around it. And now what I will do is I'll go through with my gum eraser 
and I will take and erase all the lines, clean this all up, and put it in the frame and put it together, and I will show you that how, I, how all that comes together momentarily. Uh, I have uh, finished uh, framing Snowbound. Uh, what I want to show you, now I have not put glass in this picture yet. Uh, I have put together the metal frame, which is quite easily to do. That's not hard. Uh, there are some clips that come with it. And what these spring clips do, they go on the back side of your frame underneath, right like so. And you press them into it, and that holds the picture and the glass really tight against uh, your metal frame. The metal frame was very easy. There's just some brackets, some angles to put in each corner to screw in. Uh, one thing I might say about metal framing, uh, if you do get custom metal frame them, get somebody who really knows how to cut this stuff. Because uh, if it's off just one little bit, your corners won't meet. And I have a gentleman where I go, does an excellent job on that. But that is how I mat and I frame up Snowbound. And uh, I picked these colors on the mat board because they was colors that I had plenty of mat board laying around and didn't go out and buy anything specific for that. Uh, speaking of mat board, it's very expensive and uh, a lot of places you can go, they do have scrap pieces that you can buy at a cheaper rate and uh, they'll be willing to sell you that instead of a whole sheet of mat board. And the sheet usually is $18, $20 for a sheet, so that it's quite expensive. But anyway, that's my story on this particular design. I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, I'll be talking to you later. Hey, Ronnie Rowe back here again. Um, I hope you enjoyed what I showed you today very much. I hope you got something out of it. Um, obviously, I'm not really good at filming things and uh, video this first time I've attempted to do that. So uh, bear with me, but that's the process I go through. Um, <clears throat> snowbound, after I put the glass in it and everything, this is the way it turned out. So I was I was happy with it. I thought it turned out okay. So this is a, a gift for someone and it's, uh, I, think they, I think they're gonna like it. So anyway, I enjoyed doing this and uh, again, uh, the next uh, video we'll be doing, we'll be talking about uh, morning light, and we're going to be showing you on the computer uh, how I manipulate colors to get going on that in various sections of uh, the design. So that design is 280 by 180, and uh, I've already started stitching. I showed you some of that. I've started stitching some of it, and um, I think it's going to turn out all right. I'm still... Uh, on the bottom portion, I'm still working with the the barn, if you will, in the lower right hand the lower right hand corner of this, but this right here. But anyway, I got some shading to do on that. So, but anyway, until next time, I appreciate everyone coming in, tuning into my channel. I hope you have a great week. I again, like always, please be safe and see you soon.